Hello and welcome back to No Bull Self-Publishing. My name is Jen. What is a critique sandwich? How to give negative feedback without inducing depression in the artist or creator or whatever other word you would like to use in place of that. All right, Shalom, Shalom. This is your brother Malachi coming at you with another lesson. But first and foremost, I'm going to give all praises, honor, and glory unto Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Rakar Kadash. And in the ancient Hebrew tongue, that's the name of the Heavenly Father, Yahweh, and His begotten Son, our Savior, Yahweh Shai. Also, I want to give a sincere shalom to the men, women, and children diligently waiting and patiently waiting on the return of Yahweh Shai and in the fruit of the Spirit. Okay? So, um, I was asked by a brother to uh, kind of go into something I said in my previous, um, in our previous camp, okay, this, uh, this past weekend, me and the brother McQua, um, about basically a critique sandwich. Okay. I know it's kind of a crazy name, but, uh, <laughs> basically when I was a, a manager, uh, for a restaurant and restaurants they you know, you would have your little manager's training. And one thing they would always say is, uh, to get the best out of your workers, you never want to, um, like the employees, you never want to be too harsh on them because what happens is their self-esteem, okay, will take a hit. Okay. You got to understand that, um, from a manager standpoint, you know, these people, uh, are coming from, you know, especially in the times we're in, you know, they, 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 they may have, you know, family issues, um, you know, financial issues, uh, you know, even, you know, mental issues. So them coming to work, to work, to pay, uh, uh, you know, bills, okay, in this uh, wicked society, okay, uh, people don't mind working, but they want to feel, uh, 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 you know, appreciated in a, uh, in a sense. And the reason why I'm saying this is because it's the same thing with this understanding, with this knowledge, okay? We can't, listen, two-thirds are going to be two-thirds. It's not about two-thirds. OK, it's about building for Yahweh Bahashim Yahweh Shai and being in a certain spirit and in doing so and in understanding this, we have to uh, we're basically managers of the gospel. OK, and being managers of the gospel, Yahweh Shai told us to be in certain spirits. OK, show our people their transgressions, but at the same time remain in certain spirits because uh, our people have a lot of uh, uh, demons on them. OK, they have a lot of uh, false beliefs. OK. Being in this society, drinking this wine, okay? One of the fruits of the spirit uh, uh, is salakia. One of the actual um, fruits of the flesh is uh, a drunkenness, okay? And drunkenness goes into basically philosophies, okay? And also uh, physically or, 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 or material-wise, uh, you know, being drunk, okay? But I don't want to get too off topic, but, you know, a critique sandwich is 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 you basically starting out telling you know wh wh whoever okay the the good that they do okay uh, uh the, the the positives okay and in the middle of that sandwich or in the middle of that talk okay or that lesson you tell them where uh, uh they're going off at okay or where they can you know polish up uh, uh, in certain areas okay and then on the back end you finish and and, and kind of uh, uh exhort, exhort them okay and let them know that we're going to get through these things, okay? That's what you call a critique sandwich in this sort of uh, uh, manager's world of, of, a, of a business, okay? You always want your, 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 you know, your employees to understand that you're with them, okay? That you can uh, uh, be gentle, but you can be meek as well and, and uh, long suffer with them to where until they get it, okay? And it's the same thing I want to do uh, as far as our nation, okay? So this is... um. Deuteronomy 7 and 6, for thou art a holy people unto the Lord thy power. The Lord thy power has chosen thee to be a special people unto himself. So the Lord chose us, you so-called blacks, Latinos, and Native Americans, to be his chosen people, okay? Not not, not Jesus, not Buddha, not a, a, a what is that, the little box in, in Mecca or whatever, not that, Okay? but the most high God, the only living power, okay? He chose us. So what, what, what comes with that is being holy. 
holy means separate. What comes with that is having, uh, uh, when you're separate, you have laws. You have certain uh, ways to obtain, certain laws to uh, uphold, okay? But that's also, <clears throat> on the flip side of that, why uh, we're in this situation, okay? Now, here's, you know, once again, that was kind of the, the so to speak, the, the good thing, okay? The Lord, he, he made us a nation unto himself. He gave us the birthright. What's the birthright? The kingdom of heaven, the kingdom that will be manifested here on the planet Earth, where you so-called blacks, Latinos and Native Americans will be in rulership. Where you'll have the heathen as your uh, as your slaves building up your kingdom. OK. But where you'll have peace, where, where you'll have an actual um, you'll look at your brother and not have uh, not look at them with strife. OK. Where our sisters will look at each other and not with insecurities, but actually love, okay? Where the man and the woman will look at each other with love, okay? This is why the Lord gave us this spirit that we have. Because believe it or not, no other nation can manifest that spirit of love, man. I don't know if you've ever been around heathens, but they have, <laughs> they try to simulate what they think is love. You ever notice they'll have children or whatever, but the dog, you'll see the dog everywhere with them. And like, and, and, and like, <clears throat> they, they'll they exalt, the, exhort the dog more than they do the damn children. And, and, you know, uh, uh, or, or have the dog more so, uh, in order than the children or you'd be around them. And it's just this fake feeling that's because they can't manifest the spirit that we can. Okay. This is why Esau, Edom and the other nations have, ch uh, uh, conspired against us to make sure we are opposite of love. Everything in our nation right now is hate, hate, hate. So there's a flip side to where when you don't follow the law, statutes, and commandments, what happens? You go to Deuteronomy chapter, I believe it was what, 28? And it breaks down the curses, like the 15th, uh, the 15th verse on down. And a lot of our curses is that we're going to hate each other. We're going to hate our children. We're going to hate our wives. Our wives are going to have an evil to eye towards us. We're going to hate our brothers. So why did that happen? Well, it's because we're not doing Listen, this is uh, Baruch chapter 4, verse 7. For ye provoked him that made you by sacrificing unto devils and not to Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai. So we, 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 uh, worshiped other, other gods, okay? Our people are still in this delusion. They can literally sit here and pray and, and uphold a God that looks nothing like them and will sit up here and say that that's their God, okay? And like I said, the people that looks like that God, that Jesus, they don't even like us. Shalakia. Okay, sacrifice. Also abortions, Okay. Believe it or not, you uh, wanting to be independent, our women wanting to be independent and, and have this certain spirit about them that they can do everything on their own and they're strong and this and that, okay? You're sacrificing for devils. You're sacrificing to a kingdom that's actually a, a, in opposition to you, okay? It says, ye have forgotten the everlasting power that brought you up and ye have grieved Jerusalem that nursed you. So the Lord is going to go into us as a nation, okay, being represented by, uh, by basically by a woman. It says, for when she saw the wrath of Yahweh coming upon you, she said, hearken, O ye that dwell about Zion, Yahweh have brought upon me great mourning. So basically our nation, he's talking about the spirit of our nation, that woman, Yasharala, she was mourning because she knew she was about to be judged heavily. She was going to fall from grace. And this is what happened to us, okay? It says, for I saw the captivity of my sons and daughters, which the everlasting brought upon them. With joy did I nourish them, but sent them away with weeping and mourning. So the spirit of our nation, uh, uh, she, uh, uh, Yasharala, she basically, she sent us away to, in our, to our captive's hands, okay, with the transatlantic slave trade, we, she was weeping. She was mourning. Why? 
because she knew that they were going to try to destroy us. But it told you in the first verse that the Lord, he cut that off. He didn't put us here to destroy us, okay? He put us here because we're not being the best that we can be. We're not being, okay, in the spirits that he actually created us to be in, okay? This is uh for this is this is a part now understanding why uh, uh we're, we we've been in a situation okay um like I said that we would hate our brothers we would you know hate our our women our children we would uh you know leave our children okay um we would uh wonder if we would make it back you know once we left the house okay if we would make it back into our homes daily okay looking over our shoulders these are the curses. Why? Because we stopped following our laws. We stopped following our God, okay? We actually have a merciful God. He knows we're in our captivities. There's certain things that we can't, or there's certain laws that we can't follow to the best of our abilities. That's why Yahweh Shai was sent, okay? So that's what we can, we, we got to work on. We got to work on uh, doing and being in a certain spirit. Now let's get into what we can actually work on and what's the the, uh, the solution. It says, uh, 1 Timothy 1 and 9, knowing this, that the law is not made for a righteous man, but for the lawless and disobedient, for the ungodly and for sinners, for unholy and profane, and for murderers of fathers and murderers of mothers, for manslayers, for whoremongers, for them that defile themselves with mankind, for men stealers, for liars, for perverse persons, and if there be any other thing that is contrary to the sound doctrine, according to the glorious gospel of the blessed Yahweh, which was committed to my trust. Okay, so this was Paul basically saying that the law was for the sinners, okay? This is why we have a law. We're all sinners, okay? But the Lord said, and I believe it's in Galatians chapter 5, he said that if we're in a certain spirit, then there is no law. You're void of the law. Why? Because you're going to be in a certain spirit of, of love, of, actually, let's get it. In Lord's will, this lesson is edifying. This is, uh, this is Galatians, Galatians, so like your chapter five, verse 13, it says, for brethren, ye have been called unto liberty, only use not liberty for an occasion to the flesh. So us understanding that we have grace, we don't use that grace because of our flesh, okay? You know what? I want some bacon. Let me get a bacon, egg, and cheese. The Lord, he gonna forgive me. It's okay. It's only one time. I've only had bacon once this whole year. So you don't, that that's that's a part of you, uh, you're using liberty for your flesh, okay? You're using, you're using your Hawashai for your flesh. It says, but by love, serve one another. So we should, we should be using the law to serve one another in love, okay? This is how we, we uh, get the curses off our back, so to speak. This is how we are, uh, in the, the spirit of, of actually get, obtaining that mercy, okay? By actually serving one another and basically giving that love back, okay? It says, for all the law is fulfilled in one word, even this, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. And that neighbor is your so-called black, Latino, and Native American man, okay? And the women, okay? If you can understand this doctrine of Yahweh Shai, then this is that's actually a calling uh, for him, basically you for you to be a manager, okay? A manager of the of the house of Israel. You gotta understand we're a body, we're building. Okay. So those architects, we're we're building that house up. We have to manage this. We have to manage our people in the sense of, of, of being an example, okay? regardless of the demons or the spirits that's on them. Because believe it or not, if we serve one another, then that's going to be an example unto them. And they can't, they're not, they're not going to have another choice, man. That light is just going to cancel out that darkness after a while. 
Why? Because you've always been in that spirit of love, whether they wanted to, to uh, you know, um, accept it or not. OK. It says, but if ye bite and devour one another, take heed, ye be not consumed one of another. This I say then, walk in the spirit and ye shall not fulfill the lust of the, of the flesh. Now, how do you walk in the spirit? What's the, what's the uh, spirit? It says, this is verse 22. But the fruit of the spirit is love, joy, peace, long suffering. And the reason why I want to point out long suffering right here is because you're going to understand that this is first off, this is not an easy path. OK. You understanding and, and you trying to be in the spirit of love, joy, peace and long suffering, you're going to have to long suffer. Why? Because everyone around you is going to have certain demonic spirits upon them and certain things that you may see, but you can't combat that uh, those spirits in the sense of going back and forth with them. You have to long suffer. That's why the next thing the Lord says is being gentle. It says gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. And meekness and temperance go hand in hand because you having temperance is you showing meekness. You showing that you can be humble in the sense of not, not turning up on someone, not going off on someone. Okay. It says, against such, there is no law. So if we want to get out of, of, of um, being destroyed, okay, and, and um, building ourselves up, then we have to, once again, be in a certain those certain spirits, okay? Those certain characteristic traits, long-suffering, meekness, gentleness, love, joy, peace, okay? Because if so, then that's our way out of here. That's how we get salvation. That's how we obtain the kingdom first. Okay? And you want to be, you want to be on the chariots, okay? When the Lord returns. You don't want to get destroyed and go through all of this crap, okay? And then come back in the kingdom under the loins of those who suffered and were in the spirit of love, joy, peace, okay? And now you're shamefaced because you heard the word, but you didn't listen. So the Lord chose us, okay, to be a holy people. Now with that, we, we've kind of uh, 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 went astray on this path, on, on, you know, in our, in our captivities, okay? But the Lord also showed us how we can get up out of here and how he, we can reverse that through actually loving and serving one another, Okay? When our brother or our sister is mourning, we mourn with them. We don't add unto their uh, to their destruction or their 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 sufferings. You mourn with them. When they rejoice, you rejoice. You don't have a, a ill heart towards them. And yeah, I helped you out, and I can't believe you ain't going. No, you no, you do things out of once again love, man. Gentleness, meekness. If someone smites you or, or, or says something negative or whatever, you turn the other cheek. The Lord is going to he's going to. Uh, he's going to right all our wrongs, OK? But if we're in a certain spirit, then this is what we have coming to us, OK? This is Romans chapter nine, verse twenty six. It says, and it shall come to pass that in the place where it was said unto them, ye are not my people. There shall they be called the children of the living power. And see, this is the this is where we're at in history, okay? This is where we're at in prophecy. Here in America, they thought we were nothing. Made movies that mocked us right by right in front of our face, but basically behind our backs because we didn't know. Telling us that you ain't shit. You ain't you ain't the uh, the living God's ch uh, children. The Lord said, no, you're in that land where we are here and scattered through the four corners of the earth. They're going to know that you're uh, we're his children of the living power, Yahweh. OK, they're going to know that very soon. Verse 27, it says, Esaias also cried concerning Israel, though the number of the children of Israel be as the sand of the sea, a remnant 
shall be saved. So even though there's going to be a, a mass chaos and, and, and death, okay, and, and like I said, rioting, looting, okay, and, and, and World War III, the Lord still, he's going to have a remnant that's going to be saved, okay? This is what we seek after. This is why we uh, try to obtain uh, the fruit of the spirit and, and to be in that spirit. We're going to fall. But that's why the comforter was sent unto us to continue. This is Isaiah chapter 10, verse 20. And I'll, I'll leave it at 21. It says, and it shall come to pass in that day that the remnant of Israel and such as are escaped of the house of Jacob shall no more again stay upon him that smote them. So very soon, we're not going to have to be clinging unto these Edomites and all these heathen. Okay? It says, but shall stay upon the Lord, the Holy One of Israel in truth. And what's that truth? That truth is that we're his people, that he chose us, and that we can actually be in the, in the, the spirit that he wanted us to be in. Be in the spirit of love towards one another, joy, being at peace with one another, being meek towards one another, being gentle. These things the Lord said he delights in. Okay. It says the remnant shall return, even the remnant of Jacob unto the mighty Yahweh. So this is not only the good news, but this is basically that critique sandwich of Yasharala. Okay. We are the Lord's chosen. Yeah, we, we've been going off. But that doesn't mean we have to stay in that spirit, in that slumber. Because now our Lord is coming. Okay? Now we have the good news that we can actually love. We don't have to live out what they've been telling us to live out. Hate one another. The man versus the woman. We, uh, the, the men uh, have had it worse than the women have had it worse. Listen. The Lord, he going to sort all that out. And even this is, uh, I'm, I'm talking to myself first and foremost, because it's a heavy spirit in, in Yasharala right now, to where the, the men and women are so divided that all the talking points is that, you know, uh, we've had it worse. Or no, we've had it worse. Men, listen, us as a nation, we've been destroyed, point blank, period. But we actually have the truth, Okay. We can love one another. It's okay. That's that's actually a part of salvation. Obtaining salvation. Being at peace with one another. Not trying to uh, uh, be quote unquote petty. And when someone goes against you, you go against that other, you know that person and go back and forth. And basically now you're just destroying, which is what Esau Edom is about. That's what perdition means. Destruction, chaos, confusion. That's the son of perdition. That ain't that ain't our power. We're of this. Our power is the son of 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 peace, of joy, okay, of justice. So yeah, we went off, but we now have the good news, okay, the gospel, to do right to one another, okay, to serve one another. So I pray that this lesson was edifying. Call Halal Yahweh, Bahashem Yahweh Shai, Bahashem Rakar Kadash. Brakate Yahweh, Brakate Yahweh Shai, Brakate Yahweh, Brakate Yahweh Shai, Brakate Yahweh, Brakate Yahweh Shai. Wa Abad Babal. This is your brother Malachi signing off. Shalom, Yasharalu.